A new study finds that the carbohydrate quantity in your diet impacts the respiration or the oxidation of fats within your own fat tissue, known as the adipose tissue. We're going to break down and unpack what I think is a pretty interesting study. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy when you talk about carbohydrate manipulation because it irritates vegans and vegetarians, and then it supports the carnivore low-carb community. But I just want to present this study in an objective way and let you decide if or how this will impact the way that you perceive carbohydrate intakes and content in your diet. So we're just going to break down and talk about what the findings are. And I think this is really interesting because you know my biases. I've benefited immensely from removing or, or at least having a little bit more contextually applied carbohydrates, meaning I consume carbohydrates on days that I'm physically active in around exercise. I might have fruit, some white rice, some honey, things like that. I don't have a lot of pasta, spaghetti or bread or cookies or things like that. But around exercise, I have carbs and that's why I recommend for my clients. And it turns out that when people do that, they generally have an easier time losing weight and improving their blood sugar, uh, keeping their triglycerides low and, and liver enzymes and markers of fatty liver low. So those are my biases, but let's talk about the data here. It was a study published by Ben Bickman, Cara Ebling, and also David Ludwig. Uh, we've had Ben Bickman on the show many times. We've done a short-ish little interview with David Ludwig before. Now, you know, I know that this gets controversial again because you have Kevin Hall and the people that believe that weight gain is just a function of calorie excess and it has nothing to do with carbohydrate intake and insulin and how insulin fosters uh, the the facilitation of fat deposition and and reduction in mitochondrial respiration that we're going to dive into here. So I know that there's controversy here, but let's just talk about this study, okay? The title of the study here is A High Carbohydrate Diet Lowers the Rate of Adipose Tissue Mitochondrial Respiration. And that is really the crux of what we're talking about here. We're talking about the mitochondria within your fat cells themselves because they are a piece of the overall energy expenditure equation throughout the day. You have your thermic effect of food. Just the fact of eating, it actually raises your body's metabolic rate and contributes to overall calorie burn. Uh, Non-exercise associated thermogenesis, like going out for a walk, like just moving around, uh, fidgeting, like you know, having a standing desk versus sitting like I'm doing now. I should be standing, but for these videos, I sit, right? So all of these things contribute to your overall energy expenditure. And another piece of that daily energy expenditure that affects the calories in versus calories out is your fat cell mitochondrial function. And it turns out various studies going all the way back to 19, was it 1912 or 1918? I'll have to look at their references here by Joslyn et al. Uh, let me just pull it up right here. Uh, yeah, 1912, the title of this paper, if you choose to find it, I think it's interesting. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, here's uh, Benedict and Joslyn, a study on metabolism in severe diabetes. And essentially what they found going back well over 100 years ago is that in uncontrolled type 1 diabetics, their energy expenditure is much higher than would be expected considering their body mass and their lean body mass. Now, why is that? Because in a type 1 diabetic situation, the immune system is attacking the pancreas such that the beta cells are releasing zero insulin whatsoever. So there's a, an overall dearth or lack of insulin. And what the scientists observed a long, long time ago is that their metabolic rate was actually quite high compared to the expected based upon their lean body mass. So that has caused scientists like Ben Bickman and David Ludwig to say, well, gosh, it seems that the hormones are influencing overall energy expenditure and how the body is partitioning energy. And so if we eat foods like carbohydrate-containing foods that influence that same hormone that has a suppressive effect of energy expenditure within the fat tissue or in other tissues, then maybe if people have weight to lose and weight issues, if we tell them to omit or, or at least reduce the quantity of the foods that impact insulin, they can have an easier time losing weight. And so that is the, the sort of uh, 50,000 foot view of the overall you know, carbohydrate insulin model of obesity and what we're gonna talk about here. So uh, in short, this study found that the composition of the carbohydrates in your diet influences the metabolic activity of the mitochondria within your fat tissue and may pivot them to become more uncoupled. So what does that mean? I just want to, we're not going to get into any more science besides this. We're going to talk about the takeaways, but it's important to understand fat tissue, you want it to be uncoupled. Ben Bickman has talked a lot about this on at seminars and in his book. Okay. You want your muscle tissue to be very tightly coupled. You want your muscles to take the energy that you eat in your diet and 
very efficiently convert that into the usable form of energy known as ATP. In contrast, you want your fat cells to be a little bit uncoupled, meaning that they'll take the energy that is around them, i.e. the stored lipids in the fat tissue or the, the energy that you consume in your diet, and you kind of want them to waste that, and that is called uncoupling. When your mitochondria are uncoupled, your brown adipose tissue is an extreme version of an uncoupled sort of metabolic state where the mitochondria are taking energy but not making that into usable energy in the form of ATP, they're making heat. And that's why cold thermogenesis, taking cold showers, going in the cold ice bath, where you've seen me, you know, in our Moros Co Forge in the backyard, all of that, that helps to cause your fat cells to behave differently so that the mitochondria in the fat tissue themselves waste energy, which is good. Wasted energy in fat tissue means that, you know, you're raising your metabolic rate, you're, you're, you're basically, it's a net withdrawal from your overall uh, metabolic bank account, which is a good thing. But in contrast, you want your muscles to be very tightly coupled. Anyhow, I'm getting ahead of myself. Going back to the carbohydrate quantity in the diet, uh, what these scientists found is that when individuals are randomized to consume 60% of their overall daily energy intake in the form of carbohydrates, they had more tightly coupled mitochondria in the fat tissue compared to when subjects had just 20% of carbohydrates as a function of their overall uh, calorie intake in their diet. So a lower carb diet causes more mitochondrial uncoupling, which is overall a good thing, especially in white or beige adipose tissue. And so that's what they found. And at the end of the study, they were comparing fat tissue biopsies in all subjects. It was about 30 some odd subjects, I think 29, something like that, 29, 30 subjects. And they had already been part of this Framingham Foods uh, Framingham State Food Study, which is an ongoing study, and obese individuals were part of that, and this was a sort of a, a side study within the bigger study. David Ludwig has been and Cara Ebling have been doing these, this Framingham study for a while. So these people were overweight, had a BMI over 25. They were part of the study. They had achieved weight maintenance, uh, and so they, they were uh, managing their carbohydrate and calorie intake and so forth to achieve weight maintenance. Then they had them vary the carbohydrate content as a function of energy intake in their diet, and they did the adipose tissue biopsy, finding, again, a statistically significant difference between 60% carbohydrates in the diet versus 20% carbohydrates in the diet. What they found and what that suggests is that lower carb diets may actually cause your fat cells to be more metabolically active compared to higher carbohydrate diets. Now, this doesn't seem like shocking revelation. It's just another piece of data that we should all consider, especially for individuals who have a hard time losing weight, because it gets really contentious on the internet where people say, just cut your calories, eat like these fitness models do. See, they eat all these all this junk food and they can stay super lean. That's sort of the anecdotal example that people will throw out there. What you're not really hearing about is most of these fitness models that are eating junk food and are staying lean, they're exercising twice a day. They're doing cardio in the morning and they're crushing it in the gym their overall energy expenditure is really high from exercise. And so it seems that, you know, you can afford to get away with that. There's not too many middle-aged moms in their 40s that are working, you know, two jobs or something like that that are just barely squeezing in a workout or doing some walking that are able to afford to ingest those sort of cheat meals and foods and still maintain weight loss. I mean, it's just in the real world, it doesn't work like that. Most of these anecdotal stories that you hear about, see the fitness model is eating cake and cookies and crackers and they're still jacked. What we're not also hearing about is, are they on Anivar? Are they on PEDs? Uh, are they on fat burners and thermogenics? Like all of those things. And plus, they're very young. Uh, so those things need to be accounted for. But what we also don't really hear about, and David Ludwig recently published this, I'll link, link it here in the show notes, is insulin has been suggested in over 29 studies to lower fat cell energy expenditure. And this is yet another piece of the data. So again, what is the take home here? Well, the take home here is if you are having a hard time losing fat, particularly fat around the abdomen, if you don't like, for some women, it's the tricep fat. For others, it's the back of the legs, you know, the hamstrings and the glutes. If you're having a hard time losing some of that fat and you're wondering what else could I be doing and you're not yet or you haven't yet considered cycling your carbohydrates or going on a low carb diet, like 20% of your overall energy expenditure comes from carbohydrates or less, you should give it a try. I mean, what's the worst thing that, that can happen over the course of 15 weeks? You know, maybe 
uh, your workouts aren't as good as you adapt, as you become more efficient at uh, functioning athletically in a low carb state. I mean, that's literally like the worst thing that might happen. Uh, what also might happen, your blood pressure might go down, you might lose water, uh, water retention, uh, you might have more energy because the ketones, your brain might be a little bit more clear. You know, there's a lot of benefits to going on a low carb diet. It's not for everyone. It's not the sine qua non. There are certain people genetically, for example, Asians, East Indians that do well on a high carb diet. Uh, so this isn't for everyone. It's just a tool. And I think you should try it on to see if it fits. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, sort of in the introduction, what I like to do is, is not totally omit carbohydrates, but have them more in an athletic sports performance context. So for example, I did a workout this morning at 5.30 in my home gym. So I had some dried fruit and some honey, like as I'm working out. And actually, you know, yeah, I broke my fast and yeah, I had carbs, but I had a better workout. I'll have a little bit more post-exercise energy bump because when you exercise, you do increase your energy expenditure. Although you're not burning fat during the workout, you can burn more energy throughout the day when you exercise. I'll add more lean muscle mass to my body, which will raise my overall metabolic rate. So whether or not I'm exercising or not, I'm burning more calories. So there are benefits to having intra-workout carbohydrates and not being so dogmatic about carbs are bad, never have them. Because again, we fall into these camps where people think it's only calories, only energy, or it's only carbohydrates and insulin, right? It's, there's a little bit of context here that we need to consider. So friends, what do you think about that? And I will put the full text PDF here. It's a really easy read. I think it's helpful just to understand what's going on in academia. What are these scientific studies uh, finding? And it's another tool that we can manipulate in our diet. Uh, that is the carbohydrate intake. So as always, thanks for tuning all the way in. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Please leave a comment below. Hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so. And we will catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.